Hey guys, Katu C here. Coming in with some 500 zoom today because the uh, the pool looks really good. And uh, I think I'm just going to play the 300 hands for the leaderboard. Yeah. Hopefully uh, we have some exciting 500 zoom action. I've done a few short takes recently and they've gone okay um i've made a small profit um but i've been only really short taking when uh when the pool looks good i will roll free back here with king jack Gonna check my OBS quick. Okay, yeah. All looks good. Uh so against weaker players, I'd pure open this, but um say he had folded, I'd be only open this a quarter of the time into two two good regulars. Um, especially assuming they're gonna over aggress against me as an unknown, assuming I'm I'm weaker. But if they're over aggressing and I'm just playing like a standard GTO range pre flop, then um, it's actually going to be me that's ends up exploiting them at least pre flop, uh, post flop. Definitely they're going to have an advantage. Uh, well, cold pull betting ace is really small here, uh, especially given his stack size. Yeah, the pool's amazing right now, so uh, seems like a really good spot to, to take a shot. Uh, very low frequency, 3 bet base 10, especially 115 deep. I think I'd only 3 bet this like 10% of the time. Uh, jacks, however, we are going to. Pure cold fallback. Uh, especially in these positions. And we'll be calling off a jam. I'll be pretty sad if this guy jams. Um, probably still not folding. Uh, but definitely calling off versus player. Uh, betting range here for quarter pop. And cycling off here with jacks. Unfortunate. I'm gonna raise slightly larger given this guy's V pipping 44%. Yeah, nothing we can do there with the jacks. Just a cooler. Gonna size up very slightly to my usual size because uh, I think he's gonna be pretty inelastic. And just gonna see that range for small here. When he snap calls, I think he's got like a medium strength hand, so I think I'm just gonna keep betting small. Um yeah, I'm just going to bet really small on the turn. Could could even enjoy, induce some kind of spazzes. And I think he can have 9-10 suited and pocket 10s very easily. Occasionally we'll run into Queen Jack. Um, but I think, I think I'm just going to be jamming here. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for the jam. I'm uh, going to see that range. Small here. Uh, it's not the highest CV strat. Uh, in fact, when there's an ace and a king, I think the highest CV strat is 150% um, uh, pot a check. But I'm just going to simplify. 
and yeah, we barely lose any EV just going for the court pot range but Getting some pretty big hands pre -fall. Uh Gonna defend Ace-10. It's actually a losing call um, against 3x. Uh, best mid position. But uh, I have a feeling this guy's recreational, so uh, I will make the call. Assuming we can get, get that EV back post-flop. And very easy, just call on the turn. Never even considering anything else. And checking the river. Okay, gonna take note that he opens. No assume he's a recreational. Prove me otherwise. If he's not. Easy opens on both tables. So having the club, I think I'm just going to check back. Uh, we don't get to bet all that often, three ways. Um, I think pool's really close. I'm going to mix. I'm going to call half, fold half. Uh, roll a fold. With the club, I'm going to check back. Um, I wouldn't pure bet if I didn't have a club with my ace five obviously. But um, I would do some, some, uh, some betting for sure. Um, on a 59, I think I'm just going to check back again. I think if I'd rolled under 50, I, I'd start blacking turn. And I think I'm going to bet the river. On an eight, we're actually going to raise. Yeah, I'm actually going to raise on an 8. <laughs> and our minimum value here is probably pocket 8s. But I definitely have uh, like some queen x in spades, uh, some weak king x in spades. Uh, and yeah, just, just other, other low flash draws that I didn't bet the turn with, that I now want to raise river with. So I definitely have a lot of value from both here, even though my line looks quite bluffy. Again, sizing up, this guy's B pipping 70%, so I'm actually going to size up all the way to 3. And just going to pure check back King Jack. Using a large size or check on, on this board in these positions, uh, given ranges are quite tight. Turn, I really like having the King of Spades. So I am going to bluff sometimes. On a 35, I think I will go ahead and bluff. Um, when he bets, I think, given we have the King of Spades, and if we hit our straight, there's a chance that we straight over straight him and win a very large pot. I am going to call, and we will most certainly be bluffing river. Just rolling for size. So on a 20, I'm going to go absolutely huge. I think I'll go 3x pot. And yeah, just going to raise massive here. Uh, wonder if we have on a jam. I think I prefer just going this size. 
rather than jam. And against his 2.2x, this is a defend. And nice getting it through the King Jack. So we want to do a lot of check raising with our range. Uh, we don't want to do too much calling, but I think this hand is one that does just want to call. Pretty bad turn. Um, all of his straight draws improve, apart from Ace Jack. The nice thing is he's quite likely to check down Ace Jack, given he has like a semblance of showdown value. I just can be range betting this board against a small blind fighting range uh, for a quarter pop. And I think occasionally one we want to block a River, even when our kicker doesn't play. Um, but on a 59 roll, just going to put this into the check range. And we probably have to call a bet. Don't feel great about it though. Uh, King 7 is going to mix. Yeah, I, I feel like this is under bluff this size. But I think our hand's just too strong to fold. Like we're going to have some hands like Jack 9, 9 8. Um, but I think we just fold over this. Yeah, I, I don't think we can fold this. Uh, maybe I'll fold this a third of the time. Okay, we're all super passive. I'm actually going to find a fold. I, I think this is a really under bluff line. Um, this reg as well, I, I really don't think um, he's, uh, he's not like a sicko crushing reg. Um, he plays 500 team, but I, I don't think he's um, up there with uh, with the best. Against Under the Gun, this this will uh, only 3 bet half the time. Uh, Ace-10 is going to make some raises, which we roll. Checking range on this flop as well. Uh, so we're totally uncapped. And going to be betting the turn. I think anywhere between two thirds and pot's fine. I think I'm going to go this size. Ending 9 8. This should three bet some of the time, but uh, I was timing that. So, one with the cool. We actually make some raises with this hand, uh, and we do roll it. Kind of a thin value and protection. And it's pretty bad river the queen. Um, yeah, I'd much prefer to value bet jacks than ace 10 here. Uh, even though our absolute hand strength's pretty much the same. I'm just going to be checking and, and hoping that he checks behind with, with some worse 10x. Hard for him to come up with bluffs, bluffs here, although I... Oh no, he has a pair. I wonder if that hand's ever meant to bluff in theory. I'm uh, just going to be folding the 9-8 now. Once we check raise flop and get called and then this time comes, like, um, there's just almost nothing we beat, really. I I don't think people are floating like Ace Queen of Diamonds versus my four race, so uh, yeah, there's just nothing we really beat. Let's see. The only hands we'd maybe beat are a hand like um A six that's now turning itself into a buff. Um there are some hands, but but not too many. Now, this guy's playing really loose. But I don't think sevens is the hand we want to be three bedding here. I think we want to use more high card hands. Um, 
that are going to play better at a shallow stack that that position. Oh, this is going to make some c bets, especially with the Ace of Diamonds. On a 67 now, I think I'm just going to check back. And we use a large size on the turn here. This hand will occasionally check back again, uh, maybe a quarter of the time. And yeah, we roll extremely passive, so we're, we're actually going to mix this into a, into a check back. And we will be value betting River now. And raising against his size. Uh, 6-8 is going to make some occasional folds. And again, we roll passive. Well, I'm really passive this video. Um, I'd mostly call cool there. But uh, I think on uh, in my head I was I was gonna fold a, a quarter of the time. I don't know the exact frequency. Again, it depends on like three bet sizing from from villain. Um, but I feel like mixing in a fold a quarter of the time here seems about the right frequency. Uh, I think with the fish flattening the small blind, gonna come along and see a flop of our jack turn. Um, pretty good flop. Um, don't think I like check raise uh, if he c bets into two people. Uh, I, I think his c bets can be really strong uh, against a recreational. Uh, it's going to fall nine six in the cutoff. I think our hand just has to stop bluffing. Um, going to split sizings between a third and. Large size here. And we roll aggressive, so we'll go the large size, uh, which sets up for playing for stacks against uh, recreational on the river. So, a lot of the time, I'd reset my stack in 500 zoom, but uh, there's a lot of deep stacked recreational players. So, uh, we're just going to have to. Uh, Go with the extra variants. And can be four betting ace king. That's sizing up against my usual sizing because this guy's playing 50, 50, 33. Um, so he looks quite aggressive. Quite tempted to check. Um, his betting frequencies look pretty aggressive, but definitely going to start putting money in now on the turn. Uh, ten eight actually mixes uh, some free bets and some calls. We were all just cool. And just going to be calling flop. Interesting on the turn. I think we have to take another card off. This guy's very much on the passive side though. So I don't like it so much. But um, I think I'm still going to have to take a, another card. And we're going to have to turn our bluff into a, on the river now. Trying to fold our hands. Well, anything that's not a flush really. If he bets, we just fold, but if he checks, we have to bluff. And um, we use a mix of sizings, like I'll either use overbet or two thirds on the river. Um, I think probably the nine of hearts plus can go two thirds for value. Uh, and we roll passive, so we're just going to use that smaller two thirds sizing rather than the overbet one.
But yeah, this hand definitely just has to bluff now. We're at the very bottom of our range. Yeah. I'm not sure how many hands he really beats there with nines. Like, um, he obviously beats this hand, but th there aren't too many, too many hands without hub I'm calling on the turn. I uh, can't blame him too much for calling. I mean, and he obviously won the hand. Um, but it is pretty hard for me to be bluffing there. Going to be defending Queen 8. That's a loose looking recreational. We're most certainly going to be check raising. Gonna range bet her on the right and gonna bet just geometric on the turn here. So just under pot is gonna leave us with just under pot on the river. Ace Queen, mostly gonna keep betting. And yeah, just have an easy jam now. And ace queen. I think our hand could be worth uh, a large bet. Hmm. I wonder if we we won't have any blocks here actually on the river. I feel like block doesn't make sense on a seventy one. I might even check. I think I think we want a bet big or check. I'm not sure. This could be a mistake. I'm I'm gonna check on a passive roll. I think we want a bet big or check. Um. Block just seems like so face up. Like we have so few bluffs that are gonna end up blocking here. Um, he goes huge. I think we just have to randomize this one. Um, I think mostly fold, but I'll call a third of the time. And we roll fifty, so we're gonna fold. Um, It's hard, hard for him to have bluffs there. Uh, this is going to raise a quarter of a time. And easy call here on the left. Could actually free bet this one. Actually, I really like three betting this one. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for a free bet. Um, blocking his. Blocking his strongest hands. Yeah, I, I really like this one as a three bet. On a 78, I think we just have to give up turn. I'd be barreling hearts uh, and like some absolute blanks. But this hand actually improves him more than me. Uh, he has more ace nine. Like we never have ace nine after we three bet the flop. That easy fold now. Not sure. Uh I, I guess he's thinking that I'd always keep barreling ace-king on the turn so he gets to have jams, which I think is probably correct. So uh, I hope Pyre wouldn't make his play. Um, I probably would. I think he's really heavily weighted towards ace-nine, though. Like... Um, I can't think of other hands in his range that have won a jam. I guess there are still two combos of a7 suited in his range as well. 
Pickwick would uh, want to jam. So although our seven, like having the backdoor flash draw gives us more equity, we actually don't block any of the A7 suited. Uh, we just block pocket sevens. But um, I don't think he's jamming a flush there. It'd be pretty suicidal to jam a flush. Um, I also don't see him turning much ASX into a bluff. This guy again is not like some some absolute sicko crusher. Um, he's he's an okay reg, from my experience. Uh, though he's made some some somewhat significant mistakes against me, I'd say. I think I'm going to see about this one with some back doors. And easy forward. Uh, sixes we're going to check. We got 130 hands left. Or I'm going to call it a bid. Very easy check fold here on the right. Thought I had a gap shot for a second, but no, we just have the worst hand in our range. I will all see about her. Uh, we'll, we'll be doing a lot of checking on this board. Um, but we get to do... Get to do... Okay amount of betting. Uh, just going to be checking turn. It's a really good turn for, for his range. Um, so I'm going to be checking the vast majority of my range here. 8-5 I think we just have to mix in some bets. I think I'm just going to target his snap folds. Like his... And highs and stuff. And that's more. Ace four, I think we can buy you bet. On a one, I'm going to use the larger size. Our hand's definitely worth this size. And get heroed by uh, Ace eight. Yeah, here we're, we're not trying to file, fold out Ace high. Uh, we're, we're just trying to fold out like uh, Queen highs and and 10 highs and jack highs. I would usually play squeeze only here, but there's two really big recreationals, so I just want to uh, want to play post flop with them. Uh, but yeah, usually would not have a flank range here. I still think... Mm, I, I think they're big enough recreationals that, that flatting there is actually okay. Um, like, both of them have over 40 B pip in my sample on them. So um yeah, I, I think I'm I'm okay with my call. Uh, I think the situation is appropriate for it. I'm gonna stop here on the 45. Um our range is so strong here. And doesn't have much air. Uh eights we're gonna pure call. And we're going to be check jamming flop. Uh, going to be checking on the ace. Or maybe doing some overbetting. We're all super aggro. I'm going to go for an overbet. This could be a mistake. Uh, <laughs> we we want to be super polar here. Uh, basically say we have two pair plus. Blocking some of his strongest ace x that floats the flop seems really nice. Um, just going to be jamming eights. Um, do we follow through the river? On a 5, I think we just have to follow through. Our bluffs even got there with 6 5. Um, yeah, just gonna go for it. No snap is very nice. Super hard for us to be bluffing here. Like, incredibly hard for us to be bluffing.
Uh, this will make some free bets. Can we roll it? Unfortunate. Nearly got into four days today. Like, it is just like impossibly hard for us to be buffing there. Um, which I've said a lot. <laughs> um, I feel like I've had kind of the only bluffs in my range a few times this video. Um, can't, can't blame him for calling Ace-8, but uh, I can't blame him for tanking either. But yeah, so on the turn, like, um, the reason we bluff is, like, uh, he's going to float against our sides with some ace and spades, ace in hearts, um, ace in clubs that are now no longer possible on the turn. Um, this guy's really not free betting much at all, so I think I'm just going to exploit fold. And folding ace four. Um, so yeah, it becomes a really good turn bluff. Uh, we are exclusively overbetting the turn, uh, saying we have two pair or better, basically. Um, but mostly, given preflop ranges, we have kind of specifically a set or uh, I think against no, we probably pure cool this first two point seven five. But um, yeah, by the time we get to the river, we just have almost no bluffs. Um, I guess our main bluff would be 7-6. Um, and I think we have enough set combos and 6-5 combos that we... Well, I mean, I rolled a 5 as well, so I, I, I think I could go for that. Uh, check and queen jack on a 68. Yeah, pretty crazy bluff. Um, I'm not unhappy with it. On a five, we're actually going to bet slightly bigger. Ah, yeah, I'm never pulling him off a six. On a five, going to be C betting here. But on a twenty nine, I think I'm going to barrel the turn. River, we'd roll in ninety one. I don't. I don't like blocking with this hand when we don't have the club because I don't want to block and then call a large raise when I don't have the club. So I'm just going to go for the big bet. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go for the big bet. This hand mixes some um, three bets. On an A7, which is cool. And he has queen eight. Yeah, I'd be interested to plug my uh, King Jack bluff into Pyre. Um, given I rolled like, I think six on the turn and then like five on the river or something like that. Oh, this will stab sometimes. Yeah, given I rolled like top top five percent on both turn and river, like um, I think it'll be fine. But uh. I would definitely like to plug that one in. Though I'll have to plug it in as if it's a heads up hand. So I won't get the, uh, the perfect output. 
On a 25, I think we actually bet this one. Doing more betting when we have the uh, the gut shot with our second and third players. So on the turn off, much prefer to bet Queen Jack than King Jack, I think. We'll still do a tiny bit of betting. But we rolled quite passive. And I think we actually have a pretty easy bluff now in the reverse. Being right near the bottom of our range. Uh, easy check here with Queen 8. And I think we want to split between block and two thirds here. I was going to split 50 50. We rolled the more aggressive half, so I will go for two thirds. Check and Queen 8. I think this hand has to call occasionally. On a 32, I think I will call. Yeah, I think I'm just about going to call. We block King Queen, which is like the only King X he's going to value bet on the river. Maybe he'd value bet um, King Jack. But I think his main King X value bet on the, uh, the river is going to be King Queen. So having the queen's nice to block some value. I think this mixes some rep defense. This is cool. This is the first time I've ever played OTB. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a cool moment. Yeah, the pool doesn't feel quite as good now. There's still quite a few fish, actually. I mean, yeah, no, the pool's still pretty good. Um, if I had a backdoor flash draw, I'd do like quite a bit of raising with with four two, but without the backdoor flash draw, I'm just going to be calling. Checking turn. And I think we're low enough in our range that we just want to be bluffing. Um, really hard for us to have too many floats um, on this flop. Um, on a 68 I'm going to use our most passive size we're going to split between two thirds and um, over bets here but I, I think this hand pure bluffs but yeah just going to over bet if I roll aggressive and then um, bet two thirds when I roll passive and very easy fold to a raise Checking back on the 70 here. I think this hand might want to occasionally bet. But uh, we can't we can't see bet too crazily into two players. I was sizing up on the button into a I feel she's playing too wide. I'm just gonna be calling turn here. Could even consider like a small raise that I'd do with like nines plus but otb is definitely going to be balanced enough to have uh boats and trips in this range so uh... and he's also aggressive enough aggressive enough to then put pressure on on those hands and uh, yeah just easy fold here on the river i uh, gonna keep betting Queen Jack against Recreational uh, with so many draws on the board. Probably going to value better River as well. Hmm. Mm, this is not a fun spot. I think I'm going to pull Queen Jack. I'm going to sit out next big blind as well here to reset my time back. Um, 
King Queen's a marginally better call. Uh, three's a mostly folding, but we will call sometimes. Um, yeah, what was I going to say? Uh, King Queen's like a marginally better call um, in case he jams Queen Jack or King Queen himself. Um, and also in case he jams Jack 10, which I don't see many fish jamming. Um, we're actually sizing down deeper stack to, yeah, 200 big steep. We want to size down with our, our three betting range. I don't see many recreationals jamming, um, jamming Jack 10 there. Um, but yeah, I, I think King Queen's going to be my, my, uh, going to bet with the diamond. My minimum call. I think I'll pure call Ace Queen. King Queen odd mix, Queen Jack unfolding. Um, and I'd also fold Ace Queen or King Queen if I had a diamond in my hand. Pools. Again, this looks like a recreational. Uh, opening wide into a recreational here. Uh, I'm going to go for the small bet because I think this guy's a recreational. Um, and small bets are just really effective against uh, recreationals because they overfold and also massively under raise. As a general tendency. I'm just going to go huge here. We're wrapping super thin, so we want to use massive sizings. I think this seems good. Guess I'm just going to see a flop here at 10 9. Oh, wow. That was a nice river. I mean, we were winning till the river anyway, but uh, it's the only, the only card in the deck where we actually get some, some value. Just going to be calling fours. That easy fold on the flop. Uh, again, sizing up a touch because this guy's playing way too many hands. Four and six three. Uh, nines is gonna almost be a check back using a large size or check on this board. Um, nines is just about the last hand in my range that I want to be c bang. Four three is gonna mostly fold, but we will make some calls. And yeah, I think pretty much pure checking back nines. I wonder if we get to mix folds. I think the answer is probably yes with the nine of spades. Like we just blocked so many bluffs here. Uh, I'd much prefer to call eight x um, or even a hand like ace four than uh, the nines with a spade here. So I think I'm gonna let this one go. I'm going to defend Jack 9. Pretty tempted to lead here versus Fish. I think it's just a really efficient way of realizing our equity. Um, so I think I am just going to lead. Uh, this hand is actually a, a high frequency bet. 
uh, ace five here. I'm using the large size on this board as well because there are so many straight draws. It's a very connected board. Um, but yeah, we, we want to kind of um, bet our really good hands and then a lot of weak hands um, as bluffs on this kind of texture. Mixon in a low frequency bet here. It's a pretty good board for us. Uh, not not a bad board for him at all. Um, our hand needs so much protection, so I, I so that's the the main reason this bets. Um, I think I'm going to mix occasional folds of four six. Uh, I was going to say a quarter of a time. This is now a really nice hand to uh, check raise. I think I'm going to check raise this nearly pure, and just pure checking here. Yeah, I'm going to check raise this most certainly on A29. And mixing some calls. It's really nice unblocking all those bluffs. I think I might just pure call actually. Uh, having the seven of diamonds is such a nice kick to have just unblocking all of his draws. So we actually end up raising like a decent amount of 5x uh, on the flop here. Um, I think I'm going to keep barreling this one on a 49. And if we go pot, we're going to have pot left for river. So seems good. Hmm. Maybe this is too aggressive on a 49. I think this is too aggressive on a 49. And I think we're going to be calling this one on the river. Uh, so many draws missed, and we unblock all of them. And I think we just check River Hill of our six. Occasionally going crazy. Uh, occasion, yeah, I, I think I'd occasionally buff this on the river, but um. Definitely not 88% of the time or more. And easy fold on the river. So, um, when the five comes, like uh, our actual value combos don't really decrease. Um, so, like, we obviously have fewer combos of sets. Uh, and two pair when the five comes on the uh, on the turn. Uh, always betting this, but on a eight to six, we're going to go for the small size. Um, but I think so. Our, I think our perceived value range becomes narrower, but we actually raise a lot of five uh, x on the um, on the flop here. Uh, gonna go with the overbet on the turn. So yeah, uh, our, our actual value combos kind of stay the same. We still have sixes. We still have some combos of six five, some some queen five suited. Um, our queen six kind of becomes a lot less valuable. Um, and yeah, we have less actual combos of uh, of what would be now full houses. Um, I think on a 45 I will, but this isn't as bad of a board as it looks. Um, like we still have all the nines, all the jacks, and a high frequency of eights, um, as well as like And and we don't have as many kind of under pairs as he does. Uh, we do have more just straight up overcards to the board. So um, it's kind of um, 
a neutral board. It, it looks like a very scary one. And I think if it was like, if each card was shifted one lower, I'd be checking range. But um, I think this board's actually not quite so bad for us, and, and we can still do a decent amount of that in. And yeah, the pool seems to have gotten worse. I think, are we done with the lead? Well, 10 more hands. Okay. 10 more hands and we'll call it a vid. Quite an interesting session, though. Definitely some uh, some crazy hands there. Uh, King 10 is going to mix some raises on an 88, which is going to be calling, especially with the diamond. Especially with the diamond and the spade. And this is going to pure continue. It will raise sometimes, call sometimes. Uh, we roll just cool. And just going to be checking back King 10. I think we have... Uh, wait. No, we chop with any other 10 now. I think on a 15, I'll still value about a 10. Um, I'm going to be bluffing for the size. I was kind of running out of time. On a 15, do we ever value about a 10? Do we ever get called by worse? I, I'm going to do it on a 15. Um, yeah. I think he still would call worse just because there's so many missed draws. Um, so I think value betting a 10 occasionally is fine. Um, not quite sure on that one. That one could be a bit of a, a mistake, especially because we chop with all other 10s. Um, he's probably going to think I'm an absolute whale that thinks his king kick of those, but, um, I was going for thin value with, uh, chopping with any 10. I, I, I think he finds hero calls there with like, um, even some king highs, uh, and then maybe some hands at pocket fives where he uh, unlocks the straight draws and, and flush draws. Roll in check back on this board. Um, the deeper we get, the, the more we want to mix it up between the, the less range betting we want to do and the more checking and large betting we want to do. So not going to go for the range bet strat here. Um, Pretty nice hand to start bank turn. Um, but also not the best because we can often get called by by hands like uh, ace queen off with a diamond, um, ace king off with, with a diamond, but just have us totally crushed. I'm trying to think if we ever raise. I think we do sometimes, but on a six, seven, I think we just don't fall. Hard to get called by worse, um, but I do think I do think we sometimes want to value raise the Queen of Diamonds, um, but not always. The nice thing is when the board's paired, it's unlikely he re-raises us. Um, scroll and call here on the left. Uh, I don't think he re-raises if we do raise when he has the Ace of Diamonds. Um, Ace 2 is mostly going to fold, but occasionally mix cool. Uh, especially if, uh, at this stack depth, we, we want to be calling a lot more. Um, and uh, totally with. Not even a backdoor flush draw, so we'll have an easy check fold. Absolute bottom of our range here. Ace 10, just going to be pure checking. Um, we've got moderate amount of showdown value. Uh, he can't see about this board too often at all. Um, I think I am going to sit out next big blind. And we're going to be checking river, and this hand definitely could end up here at Um Yeah, I think this one's a pretty good hero call, and we roll very aggressive, so I will go for it. Mostly losing, but getting a good enough price against an aggressive opponent, so uh, gonna have to call some of the time. Here, I'm just gonna bet a size that a high diamond 
or an ace will likely call. I'm going to block the river. Yeah, just going to block the river for value here. Uh, this will open to the weaker regs. I think, actually, I think this guy's a pretty good reg. Um, but yeah, that, that'll open uh, a decent amount on the button. Especially for my small size. And can we get even with the aces? That's a good start. That's a good start. How much do we need to win to get even? We are down 464. Right, if we stack them, we're up. I'm going to be using a large size because we're deep. Okay. Unlikely we're going to lose this hand. I think I'm going to range back for 15% pot here. Give him the ace king of diamonds. One time. Turn on a 46. I'm just going to check with the heart. I think I'll bet this a third of the time when I have the heart. If he has ace-king, I think he's going to start value betting himself. And I'm not scared of the five. I think I'm just going to go large on the river. If I get jammed on, I'm going to throw up, but uh, probably end up calling. Nice. I don't think we're quite even, but we're about even. Wow, that's quite the hero call. It's not the worst. Um, I think my main bluff is going to be king-queen suited, uh, which he unblocks. Um... I think it's probably too loose. I think you just want to have an ace in your hand. Um, I don't think the jack of hearts is super relevant. I'm going to have some king jack of hearts, but I think that's even going to barrel turn relatively often. Um, so not in love with his call. I think it's probably a losing call, but um, don't hate it at the same time. So we finished the video down 60 bucks some really interesting hands there um that king jack that king jack buff was uh yeah that was definitely uh an interesting one um i genuinely think he nearly folded a save there um so i don't want to filter by this so king jack buff was interesting uh the jacks all in free was very standard um I'm very happy with my 10-8 bluff. We just didn't get that one through. Uh, other than that, no crazy hands that we lost. Yeah, this this was definitely the most interesting hand of the session that I, I really want to run, run Pi Stims on. Um, so our best bluff is going to be 7-6 suited, which I think we're going to take this line a hell of a lot with. I wonder if we get to ever 
um, bluff hands like this that just block his ace king and ace jack and not his two pair and sets. Uh, so interested to see that one. I I think I'll run that one. Uh, in my in my sims, I'll have to. Uh, I don't have a, a three way solver, so I won't be able to solve with the uh, the flatter, but I'll. Uh, I'll try and solve that as actually as I can and uh, see if I'm absolutely crazy or if uh, if what I was thinking was okay and it, it's okay to do a very low frequency. But uh, yeah, that was that was definitely an interesting hand and could have been a big spew, but uh, I, I, I don't think it's terrible. And uh, yeah, I, I think we nearly got into fold flop too, so it uh, could be quite an effective bluff uh, against a capable opponent that's not just looking at their hand strength. Yeah, cool playing versus ATB as well. Um, yeah, never played a hand against him before. So uh, pretty pretty cool moment for me. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the first 500 Zoom video. Hopefully there'll be more. Uh, I've been relatively successful in my shot takes. I'm not I'm not going to play 500 Zoom when the pool's tough. Um, you know, uh, pool select pretty hard because uh, most of the time the pool's just like totally full of regs like sometimes it's like 29 regs and one fish and poker stars is the only real person that's winning and then like the two or three best regs in the pool which i'm definitely not one of so uh yeah anyway i'm gonna stop rambling and uh hope you enjoyed and catch you soon bye